Hi everybody, in this video we are going to look at a typical career path in an FMCG sales and marketing company. So um, let's go through this entire piece okay, step by step. All right. So you see here, uh, there is a head sales and marketing who has two people reporting into him. Uh, in a smaller company, there might be the same person who is handling both the roles. So there will be a national sales head and there will be a head of marketing. Okay, sales and marketing, two different, okay, two different structures. Now, uh, the sales head has a modern trade, uh, you know, vertical and he has a general trade vertical. So as we have already seen in the previous video, what is general trade? General trade is your Panwalas, Kirana stores, cosmetics outlets, salons, um, uh, chemist outlets. Okay, These are all called general trade. General trade is mom and pop stores, small stores, small turnovers of a few lakhs uh, per month and there are millions of them across India. Modern trade is your large departmental stores. So in India, modern trade is basically a duopoly. 51, 50 or more than 50% of the market is with Reliance Retail and an additional 35% is DMART. So two companies and you've got 85% of the market out there. That is called modern trade. Now, general trade, the structure, the, the biggest number of people and therefore the biggest number of jobs available with you um, in, in any company are in the general trade wing. Modern trade is very small. Marketing is very small. So let's spend a little time on the general trade piece. Okay, and understand that. So imagine uh, you've got a head office. The head office will have a national uh, sales manager who is handling general trade and there will be another head of modern trade. Okay, if that's the case. Now, this national manager will divide the country into four parts. These are called zones. ITC calls them district and each district will have a district manager. Uh, each zone will have a zonal manager. So typically there are four to six zones, uh, Mumbai, Delhi, uh, Kolkata and South Zone would be headquartered either in a Bangalore or a Chennai and sometimes you might have a, another zone in Hyderabad, you might have another zone in let's say uh, Lucknow, okay? uh, that's it, so five or six zones uh, depending on the business that is available. Each is headed by a zonal manager and uh, within zonal zones you've got a state head or a branch manager. So uh, Western Zone for example will have a branch manager or area managers uh, an area so Mumbai city will generally be an area Gujarat will be an area rest of Maharashtra will be an area headed by an area sales manager and um, uh, and and typically there will be six or seven area managers reporting into a branch manager or a, or a zonal manager and um, okay, and the next level is a territory sales in charge a TSI or uh, uh, or what is called an area executive in idc we call it an area executive hul calls it a tsi all right so this is the entry level the entry level in a company is tsis or a's uh, so there will be let's say eight or ten se's handling mumbai they will report into a asm mumbai now look at this there is an asm metro and there is an asm non-metro or an area sales manager metro and non-metro so mumbai is a metro but the Pune area sales manager will be handling Pune as well as the surrounding area, which would be, let's say, Nashik, Sangli, Satara, Karad, Kolapur. Okay? That's the kind of thing. And there might be another area manager based out of Nagpur who is handling, let's say, Marathwada and Khandesh, which is your Aurangabad and Akola, Amravati, okay, Buldana, those kind of areas. Okay? So this is the way the structure is done. And the sales executives, okay, uh, territory sales executives, Territory sales in charge. Okay, uh, don't get you know don't get dazzled by the uh, by the terminology, but just understand the role, the individual contributor role, which is what is called a sales trainee, which is the level at which the typically tier two or a tier three marketing per, you know person is likely to join. That is an individual contributor role. This role handles the distributors in the market, and uh, these distributors are. Uh, uh, you know, they will have distributor sales representatives, DSRs or distributor salesmen called DSMs and these DSMs go into the market and make calls, take orders. The distributor has a, has a vehicle with which he uh, supplies the whole the, the product to the retailer and that's how the entire general trade structure works. All right. Now, what do you have on the modern trade side? So modern trade um, is basically much less number of outlets. Okay, so you don't need that many people. So in modern trade, what you have is uh, you'll have a, a, a let's say a key account manager. The concept is key account manager. The key account manager handles a particular chain. So Reliance Retail, key account manager, Western India. Uh, 
uh, there might be two or three people handling Reliance Retail all across the country. Uh, you might have uh, two or three people handling DMART and you'll have all the others who are, a, who are handled by one key account manager. These key account managers have merchandisers working with them who are handling individual DMART outlets. So one merchandiser is responsible for uh, various activities that he does in let's say 8 to 10 DMART uh, outlets in a particular geographical area. So Bandra to uh, Daisar uh, in, in Mumbai will be handled by one particular merchandiser and these merchandisers handle the modern trade outlets. All right. So this whole thing is the sales structure. All right. You've got a, let me summarize, you've got a modern trade structure, you've got a general trade structure. General trade structure has a national sales manager, zonal managers, zonal managers have area sales managers and ASMs have TSIs or AEs or uh, TSEs reporting into them who handle the frontline distributors. Distributors have salespeople who actually do the selling. Now, in most FMCG companies, your role is to handle this entire supply chain okay, and make sure that it delivers. Right? Now, what are the two things on which you are supposed you are actually accountable for? Okay, uh, let me okay, let me do one thing. Let me just come back to this. I'll complete this entire structure and then talk about the jobs that are available. All right. Now, this was the entire uh, general trade structure. Now let's come to this was the sales structure. Now let's come to the marketing structure. So marketing in an FMCG company consists of two different activities. One is consumer marketing. The second one is called trade marketing. What is consumer marketing? The consumer is someone is who's actually buying the product. You and I as consumers are, are, are the ones who are actually using the product. All the marketing activities that are done to the consumer are called consumer marketing. However, there's a second set of activities that are called trade marketing. So who is a trade? The retailer is the trade, the wholesaler is the trade. And this trade marketing is generally in, is a role available in uh, larger companies, uh, which is a regional role. So a consumer marketing team is generally based out of head office. So Dabur operates out of Delhi, HOL operates out of Mumbai, um, ITC Foods will operate out of Bangalore, ITC Tobacco operates out of uh, uh, Calcutta. So the consumer marketing team is the team that is sitting in the head office. The trade marketing team is at the regions, which means you will have a trade marketing manager north, south, east, west sitting in a Delhi, Bangalore or Chennai if it is south, uh, Mumbai if it is west and uh, Kolkata if it is east. That's the trade marketing role. Consumer marketing, there be a vice president sales and marketing. The consumer marketing team that the, you know, what you have is, okay, let's say you will have brand manager who reports into a category manager and the category manager reports into the head of sales and marketing. So Rin will have a brand manager, Synthol will have a brand manager. Um, you, these, these brand managers of different products, different brands report into a category manager. So a category manager, Paints, category manager, um, waterproofing products, category manager, foods, category manager, skin care, category manager, hair care. This, so all the hair care brands will have a brand manager or an assistant brand manager. Now, depending on the size of the brand, whether it's 50 crores, 10 crores, 100 crores, 500 crores or more, you might have the seniority of the person and the number of brands attached to that person. That's the, okay, that's the point that is, that is critical over here. All right. So uh, you, you've got a brand manager and somewhere along the way as D2C becomes more popular and we have looked at D2C in the previous videos. If you not, if you missed out that video, just go and have a look at that video again. And in D2C, what we're talking about is there will be someone who will be handling the e-commerce operations of that particular brand. Um, in most companies, there will be one uh, digital marketing manager or a D2C manager and that guy will be handling all the brands who, which are loaded onto the uh, e-commerce website. In a larger company, uh, every brand manager will handle the, the digital marketing activities for that particular brand. All of this keeps changing. Uh, sometimes the you know the structure is either vertical or horizontal. When we say vertical, what we're talking about is it's brand wise or category wise, but digital cuts across brands and there'll be one digital marketer handling multiple brands in the organization, right? Same is the case with modern trade. There'll be one, um, you know, one modern trade manager who's at the front end responsible for selling all the brands in a particular uh, modern trade outlet. All right, now let's come to basically then what is the difference in these two roles? 
Well, the point is like this. Um, a brand manager handles one or a small number of brands across the entire country, whereas an area sales manager will handle all the brands of the company in a smaller geographical location. So the ASM Mumbai is responsible for all the sales of all the brands of the company okay, or of a particular division. So in a larger company like ITC, there will be an ASM Foods, there will be an ASM uh, Tobacco and the ASM Tobacco is responsible for selling Gold Flake, he's selling Capstan, he's selling Bristol. He, in an ASM Foods will be responsible for Ashirwad, Bingo and all the products. There will be an ASM Personal Care which is responsible for or Vivel and all, all the you know all the various products. So area sales managers, zonal managers, branch managers handle multiple products and the product custodian is the guy sitting in head office who is responsible for marketing that brand across all over the country. Now how do conversations usually uh, happen? So the, the discussion will be let's say Ashirwad has launched a new variant of, uh, the, of Atta and uh, let's say we want to launch it in you know we launched it we launched it about two years back and uh, uh, it doesn't seem to be doing too well in Aurangabad. It doesn't see it seems to be doing well in Mumbai, but uh, Pune is a very weak market. So the brand manager will have a discussion with the Pune area sales manager and say, what do we need to do? Do we need to change the price? Do we need to run some schemes? Do we need to uh, do some special activity? Do we need to hire special distributors for it? Do we need to hire a special team of salespeople to do this? These are the activities that come under a sales and marketing banner. All right. In the rest of the course, as we go further, we will discuss how to do all of these things in detail. Now, coming to the okay, coming to the question now. So this entire structure is supposed to sell, right? What is it supposed to sell now? And and what are the three different terms on which it is supposed to sell? Well, let me tell you what these three terms are. So the first point is the product is made in a factory, and from the factory is goes to a go down a warehouse. So CNF is a carrying and forwarding agent. It's it's gone to a go down. From the go down, it is distributed to distributors. So uh, Mumbai city will have maybe um, you know anywhere from 2 to 50 distributors depending on the size of the distributors and uh, these distributors sell to the wholesalers. The distributors also have a team of salespeople called DSMs, distributor sales reps. Uh, these are uh, these are on the roles of the distributor not on the roles of the company and these DSMs uh, make calls on retailers, take orders and the distributor then dispatches the orders subsequently. All right now Three terms that you need to understand in you know in what your targets are is primary sales, secondary sales, and offtake. So, what is primary sales? When the company sells to the distributor, it is called primary sale. Right? Factory to CNF is not a sale. The company has not invoiced anything. Okay. Uh, the quarterly numbers that HUL reports is primary sales it is not secondary sales uh, so uh, Bajaj Auto reports uh, a sales figure which is that this is the number of uh, you know uh, products number of pulsars that we dispatched uh, in in the automobile industry this is called wholesale and retail in the FMCG industry remember we said it's a more complex industry it's got primary sales which is company selling to a distributor you got secondary sales which is a distributor selling to a wholesaler or a retailer and when you and I go to a retail outlet and buy, that is called off-take. Now, the sales and marketing team is responsible for all three things, which is primary, secondary and off-take. Sales people will generally have a primary sales target. In some of the better companies, there will be a secondary sales target also. Um, and uh, marketing is usually responsible for the off-take. All right. However, it's not as if these three uh, you know, groups are operating in isolation because um, you know the activity is consumer marketing helps in offtake, trade marketing will help in secondary, your entire distribution focus will result in a better secondary focus but if the product is not available at the distributor then your primary sales itself is a, is a bottleneck in the company. The daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, annual activities of every sales and marketing person is to drive this entire system. Right, that's what makes it very complex. There are uh, lots of tools that you use to drive this entire sales system. And from here, we therefore come to this whole piece is okay, where does recruitment happen in a company and uh, what kind of career path 
typically in sales and marketing do you actually can you actually experience okay this is true for a b2c environment that's that's how it works so here's a point tier one companies which is tier one educational institutes which is your iams your blackie your bangalore lucknow ahmedabad kolkata cozy code indore sp gen um, fms and all that are usually ranked as uh, tier one companies these are the companies the, the students of these companies will join as management trainees and management trainees will go through a one year training induction after which they will get confirmed either as area sales managers or as brand managers or assistant brand managers all right um, on the modern trade side you have a recruitment of a merchandising executive okay tier two managers will join as either merchandising executives or the vast majority of recruitment happens as sales trainees okay let me go back and explain to you where this happens on the hierarchy so uh, the merchandiser tier 2 sales executive tier 2 and below and management trainee is up country the difference between this level and this level is a minimum of 4 to 6 years okay 4 to 6 years that's what i'm that's what i'm telling you and this is the career path of a of a top tier fmcg company we're talking about the top 10 fmcg companies here uh, so therefore we're talking hul itc png tower marico nestle kellogg's okay that's that's what those are the companies that we are talking about now what will be your typical career path so let's understand how this works um if you're a tier one graduate you will join as a trainee asm you will join as a management trainee one year later you will get confirmed as an asm up country okay uh, now this might be let's say asm rest of maharashtra you will be based in Pune and you will be handling rest of Maharashtra based out of Pune or Nagpur. Subsequently, a year or two later, when you get promoted, you will move as an ASM Metro. But a Pune rest of Maharashtra ASM may not necessarily move as a Mumbai Metro ASM. He may be posted to a Gujarat as a ASM. Okay, it's a bigger area, more sales, right? So he was handling Pune earlier. But now he's getting into a bigger area, which is okay, Gujarat. Uh, he spends a couple of years in Gujarat. And then after that, he may go as a brand manager. Okay? So now you're moving from the sales hierarchy to the marketing hierarchy. And you spend, uh, you know, maybe two to five years as a brand manager. Uh, you get promoted as a category manager in, in that particular environment. And then after that, you may come back as a zonal manager south. All right. Now I want you to understand this because... This is something which a lot of people get it wrong. You will never be in sales throughout your life or in marketing throughout your life. You will keep alternating back and forth. PNG is the only company where if you join on the marketing side, you will continue on the marketing side. Where the MBAs will go there and will stay in marketing. You might do a six month stint initially, but then after that you will come back and probably settle down in marketing because that's a huge organization. Their marketing structure is also huge. In every other company, you are going back and forth between sales, marketing, sales, marketing. And as you go up okay, across those ladders, you're building uh, a general management capability and that makes you more qualified to become the head of sales and marketing 15 or 20 years down the line. So anybody who says that I want to become a CEO in five years, basically doesn't know what he's talking about. Right? It doesn't happen. It doesn't make you sound very aggressive or ambitious. It actually makes you sound foolish. Right? It takes 15 to 20 years for an individual to move from the bottom of the ladder to the top of the ladder. The FMCG is, we've had plenty of cases where zonal managers have been DSRs, okay, distributor sales rep, once upon a time. Okay? That's, that's how uh, easily it happens. So even if you are from a tier two institute or a tier three institute and you join as distributors and you do a great job as a distributor sales rep, uh, the company will look at you, identify you as a potential TSE. Yes, you need to be a graduate. So graduates usually join as TSEs, AEs. Uh, MBAs will join either as TSIs or, uh, you know, or as uh, management trainees, depending on whether they are tier two, tier three or tier one institute. And that's how the entire hierarchy suffers. Okay, I, 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 the hierarchy not suffers, goes through this entire process. Um, the difference in timelines between uh, individual contributor TSI role and becoming a management trainee, you know, becoming an ASM is almost four to six years. The difference in salaries, uh, TSIs will join at between four to six lakhs of annual CTC. Um, 
Tier 2 colleges, when they join as management trainees, will make about 10 lakhs. Tier 1 will make anywhere from 25 to 30 lakhs. Okay, that's the difference. So it is worth getting into, you know, studying for CAT. Uh, and, and you got to be in the 99 percentile or above to make it into any of the top institutes. Okay, that's that's the idea. All right. So to summarize, um, okay, now what is the typical role? So the typical role is that you are in in every month. Um, you will have to do between 14 days to 22 days of travel. So the Mumbai area manager. Now, where will you do this travel? This travel will be in your geographical area which you are handling. So, if you are a Mumbai ASM, you are in the office for about four days in a month and the rest of the time you don't even come to office. You actually go into the field and spend time driving this entire distribution system. Uh, if you are a Pune area sales manager handling Pune and surrounding markets, which is let's say Kolapur okay, on this side and Nashik on this side and Aurangabad on that side, then you may spend about two to three days every week in Pune. And uh, you'll go down to Satara, Sangli, Karat, Kolapur for three days, come back again on Saturday. Uh, you'll do one stretch, you'll do Nashik and, uh, you know, and, and other areas and Jalgaon and then come back to Pune. So your, your base will be Pune, your, your uh, you know, stay will be in Pune. And this is how a typical month looks like. The first four, five days is what is called headquarter, uh, where you look at last month's review, you kind of come in and talk about what you want to do the next month. The marketing team will come down and give them their inputs. And then you spend about 20 to 22 days. Uh, even as a marketing manager, you're supposed to spend at least 10 to 14 days in the market. Right. So uh, please do not, uh, you know, do not get this wrong. In both the roles, you are traveling extensively in the market. Right. Nobody designs strategies by sitting in air-conditioned offices. You have to be in the field, you have to talk to distributors, you have to talk to your sales team, you have to go and talk to consumers, uh, you have to try out different points. There are brand launches happening every week, every month in every FMCG company and, this, and, and it's exciting, it's, it's awesomely inspiring and there's massive capability development that happens if you are able to excel in this particular environment. Alright, thank you. I will see you in the other video. Thanks.